Well, hi everyone. I'm Michelle Lee, Editor-in-Chief of Allure, and I'm so excited to be here today with Miranda Kerr, who is an international supermodel, a devoted mother, the founder of, I was just saying, the Allure Best of Beauty award-winning brand Allura Organics multiple times. And on top of all that, she just launched a new home collection with universal furniture called Love, Joy, Bliss. Hi, Miranda. How are you? Hi, what a wonderful introduction. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, we were just saying before we went live that I'm I'm so excited to be here with you because, you know, during this time of people working from home, like I actually feel like these virtual events have been so great and like to, to get to chat with you, especially right after Best of Beauty is really exciting. Yeah, and it keeps people connected. It's a way that um, you just feel like you're not alone when you get to see people. And when I watch these events and watch other people talking on these events, I'm like, oh, okay. You just feel that much more um, together in a way, even though you're not physically together. Yeah, well, it feels more personal sometimes too, because we're all home. So you're sort of like seeing people in their like unguarded spaces. <laughs> yeah, it's so um, so I want to talk a little bit about Cora. Like I think that a lot of our conversation today will really revolve about around entrepreneurship and beauty. And you, of course, launched Cora back in 2006 before clean beauty, that category was really taking off. Um, why was it important for you to do something that used only organic and natural ingredients and in your products? Well, I grew up in a little country town in Australia, a little town called Ganada, and Basically, we grew up like growing our own produce. My grandpa had a little veggie patch and my grandma would, you know, teach me how to cook from a young age. So we had that down pat and she would come up with these different little remedies, um, aloe vera juice or noni. And, um, and so we were quite health conscious from a young age. But when I was 16, my mom got diagnosed with um, cancer in her spleen. And so we ended up going into more in-depth like research as a like, and we found this little book called The Chemical Maze. And The Chemical Maze talks about like all the labels that you come into contact with, whether it be food or cleaning supplies or what you wash your hair with and what you put on your skin. And then it explains to you in a simplistic way of like, this is carcinogenic in like, you know, big doses, the large, you know, quantities. Um, this is actually, and you know, and what it does, like if it's a uh, emulsifier or if it's like a solvent or whatever it is. So we were just shocked to see how many toxic ingredients that were out there and that were readily available on the market. And even products that were claiming to potentially be natural might have like one natural ingredient at the beginning and then a whole list of other chemicals underneath it. And so we were pretty shocked to find that out. And a friend of mine and I were talking and I was saying to her, like, you know, a couple of years after that, it's interesting because I'm eating organic and eating like healthy foods, but our skin is our largest organ on our body. So what we put on our skin sinks in and I wasn't able to find anything that was certified organic. And so I said to her, like, it's crazy like that there's actually like no like true certified organic that's out there that really works and like why hasn't someone created that and she said why don't you speak with a friend of mine who um works at a lab so who was doing certified organic essential oils in melbourne and just have a conversation with them and i was like okay and then this conversation led to me testing and trying samples um back and forth and it was so fun to be able to like work on these products. And I said from day one that I wanted the products to be certified organic. I wanted the key ingredient across the range to be noni juice, which my grandmother introduced me to when I was 13. And my whole family pretty much every single day drinks noni juice. And if I had a sunburn or I had a pimple, my grandma would get the noni juice out. She'd be like, put the noni on your pimple, put the noni on your sunburn, like any kind of, because noni works on a cellular level to normalize the cells. And it was such a wonderful, potent superfood, superfruit that it made so much sense for me to have it as the key ingredient. And so I spoke with the organic chemist and I just feel so lucky that we really, because we were so ahead of the time, like, we are working with the best 
in the industry and like the leading organic pharmacists. And I just would like talk with them about what are the ingredients that will work synergistically with the noni to make them more powerful? Because I really want products that are not only healthy for you and not only organic, but really are results driven. Like efficacy is the most important thing. I don't want to waste my time putting anything on my skin unless it works. And, you know, I just, it's just for me, like trying and testing all the products throughout the many years of my modeling career, I knew what worked from a consistency point of view and um, being passionate about health and wellness and studying at integrative nutrition and a little course, another course I did in Australia. I knew that health is wealth and I knew that healthy skin was the most beautiful skin. So it all just kind of came together. Can you talk us through a little bit more about what Noni is? Because I remember when you came to see me in my office and talking about what Noni is, and I was not familiar with it, to be honest with you, before Cora. Um, is it something that everyone in Australia knows about? Was it a family thing? Like, tell us a little bit about it. Like, if we were to see a Noni um, plant, like, what does that look like? So a Noni plant, they grow naturally in some parts of Australia, but also they grow a lot in Tahiti. Tahiti, Fiji... You get to see, actually, for our honeymoon, um, we got to see a lot of the natural noni plants growing because um, we were in Fiji and they're like beautiful, green, very potent. Um, they call it the cheese fruit on the island. And for thousands of years, people have been using and drinking this fruit as a potent remedy to really help um, any ailments that they were having. So it contains over a hundred vitamins and minerals. It's full of vitamin C. It's um, got also vitamin A in there. It's basically just full of antioxidants. It helps protect your skin from any environmental damage and the free radicals. And um, it's also antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. It's all of those uh, anti-inflammatory. <laughs> So we should all be growing noni plants in our backyards, I guess. <laughs> Basically, it does require quite a warm climate, though, to grow the noni plant. But it's it's really the one um, kind of natural remedy. As I was saying, my I grew up that way with my grandma, just constantly looking into like whether or not it was like colloidal silver or aloe juice, or it was the noni that really stuck, and we saw. A lot of results with ourselves with energy and um with our skin and like vitality and all of that so i really believe that beauty is on the inside and the outside that's why we also do a supplement at cora um and so that contains the noni so you're drinking the noni and you're topically applying the noni so it's that whole view Okay, so you were talking about um, working with a cosmetic chemist and what was the first product or products that you launched at Cora? Because I also, I've talked to a lot of different founders and they've talked about how doing something that is sustainably sourced or making sure that it's organic is, it's difficult. Um, and it's also difficult to make sure that you're being credible about it. Like what were the things that you went through early on to make sure that you were doing things the right way? So being certified organic was so important to me because I'd seen a lot of, um, you know, even if you went to a health food store, you would look and assume that something was like healthy that was on the, you know, that was presented to you. And then you would look in the fine print and read, maybe the first ingredient was natural, but then all underneath it, it wasn't. And you're like, hold on a second. So for me, I just felt like transparency is key. Let's just get certified. What is the leading certified, um, you know, agency on this. And that's when I came across EcoCert Cosmos and they are the world certification for uh, certifi like certification in like beauty um, because they have different ones for food, but this is for beauty. And so they have very strict laws um, where they come in and audit like everything that you're doing, like from everything from like, has to be approved through them from not only the ingredient sourcing, but all of the packaging inside, outside, um, all of the words has to be approved through them. So I understand why a lot of people and businesses don't go down that road because it is a lot of extra time and effort and um, it requires like a real passion 
for getting products out there that are that do contain you know the true organic ingredients um and this is the way that i knew that we could do that being certified organic and having an outside auditor stay on top of us to make sure that we are meeting those really strict guidelines so yeah. and what was your first product that you launched the first product so what i worked with was on with the labs like at the same time was cleanse mist moisturizer and our current Noni Glow face oil. So we originally started with it as it being more like a rosehip oil, um, but then we reformulated and revamped the formulation, um, nutted sea buckthorn, sea buckthorn oil and pomegranate oils to really make it the product that it is today. And people just absolutely love that product. I've heard a lot of people say they're not sure if they can use a face oil because either they have an oily, they have oily skin or other things. Would you say your advice is for those, like for anyone, could they use your, your face oil? Yeah. So basically with our face oil, it balances your pH. So sometimes there's this uh, idea that maybe you, if you have oily skin, that you need to use products that are lighter and whatnot. But sometimes if you are not, so if you're stripping your skin too much, you produce more of an over oil, you will activate those sebum glands to produce more oil. So with this Noni Glow face oil, it balances the pH so that you're not overproducing oil because it already feels that oil there. So it's like, oh, okay, I don't need to like overreact because I've already got some oil there balancing it. Uh, it's quite logical when you think about it, but it's also good for those with sensitive skin like dermatitis or rosacea. We've seen incredible results on people of all ages. I use it even on my little ones, um, my little two-year-old. So my nine-year-old has like, you know, pretty, you know, incredible skin and hasn't had any issues, but my little two-year-old had a little bit of eczema when he was born. So I would put the Noni Glow face oil on there and it completely um, healed it. As long as I put it on every day, it was just, now his skin is great. Okay, I should try that on my baby. <laughs> um, okay, so clean beauty, of course, has been a big buzz term recently. Um, I mean, you've been in this business for a while now. How have you seen clean beauty evolving and what do you think is next? I'm super excited to see the uh, excitement around clean beauty and that people are so much more open to it because there was such a misconception for so long that maybe clean wasn't as powerful or organic wasn't as powerful. But there's been studies done now that actually show, so for instance, speaking about organic, because organic is just you know, a lot more than just clean beauty. So not only when you're certified organic are your products not containing all those nasty and toxic chemicals I was talking about, but they also are grown on soil that is not depleted. So with when you have an organic ingredient, they have strict rules as to the soil that they grow on has to be nutrient rich, to therefore produces, a Cambridge study has shown, up to 60% more antioxidants than a non-organic ingredient. So therefore, that's what makes, in my opinion, certified organic so much more powerful than just clean. Um, because as I said, I don't, I don't want to just put something on because it's non-toxic. I want it to actually work. And that's why it's important for me to, for it to be certified organic, not just clean. But it's great to know that people are educating themselves, looking and reading the packaging, becoming more aware of what they're putting on their skin, what they're putting in their body, because at the end of the day, like we need to take care of ourselves. And if we take care of ourselves, we feel better. We have more energy. We can be better, you know, parents. We can be better friends. We can be better partners. We can be better at our job if we take care of ourselves. And I just feel like I've grown up with that attitude of like, to me, it was a no brainer. Like, of course, health is wealth. Of course, if you're going to get the same results if not better results by using an organic product, why wouldn't you do that rather than filling your body with chemicals? There are things like that we can't control, for instance, like the pollution outside, but there are things that we can control. And this is something that we can control every day to minimize our exposure. Yeah. So, um, you, you mentioned it before about greenwashing where um, it is very confusing, I think, as a consumer nowadays, because 
the terms organic, clean, and natural are, are so hot that there are definitely some brands who on packaging are, whether they're doing it intentionally or not, um, it's misleading because maybe there is one ingredient that's natural and then everything else is chemical on it, but it's sort of like they put the word natural really big. What do you think like for our, our audience out there today, like how can people best educate themselves because it is really confusing if you're out and you're looking at shelves. Like, how do you know what's what's good and what's not good? It's important to educate yourself because you, so reading the book for me, like The Chemical Maze was such an eye opener. And it's like a little handbook um, that you can just look and it tells you anything from like the ingredients are in like hair care, the ingredients that you're using in your laundry detergent, the ingredients that are in any packaged food that you're using. And you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that like E302 was blah, blah, blah. And it, you know, adds to this. And look, I think at the end of the day, it is about a balance. You could drive yourself crazy with this. And I've kind of been down that road. So I pulled it back a little bit and I was like, you know what? You've got to live. Being happy and being like, you know, having a good mindset is just as important so don't make yourself crazy about it, about it. Make an educated choice. Like, okay, today I'm going to have this. I know it's not that healthy for me, but tomorrow I'm going to do this. Or for instance, like with me, not everything I use is organic, but I use like all my body products and my face products that are certified organic because that is my largest organ. But my makeup, I'm not using everything that's organic because I'm like, that's part of my 80, 20. I'm like, try to be 80% healthy and like 20% indulgent. And just like, that's how I eat. That's how I live. That's how my personality is. Like I'm a little bit, 20% a little bit of a wild child and 80% good girl, you know, <laughs> but you've got to have that balance. Yeah. I do the same thing too. Like my hair and my body, I try and use mostly like organic natural and then makeup is it's a mix of everything. Yeah. I mean the, the technology for organic makeup there, there is some nice, great natural products out there. Like RMS is my friend, Rosemary, love her. Um, and there are other great natural brands out there. But I mean, the technology for certified organic makeup really just isn't there yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, of course, have had this long, amazing career in modeling. Um, you've traveled the world, done so many amazing things. Like how has your career as a model impacted your life as an entrepreneur? Like, did you learn certain things along the way um, that have helped you in starting your own business? Definitely. I felt like modeling, like throughout my years of modeling. So I started when I was 13, um, but I made sure that I finished my high school education until I actually like was modeling full time. So I'd only model like part time on weekends and holidays and whatnot before then. And it really exposed me to some of the best CEOs in the business, some of the best marketing agencies, um, really top level people in the industry um, and some of the most creative people in the industry as well. Did you and know so back then though, as a teenager, that you should pay attention to that? No, but it was something because it was something that I was learning without even understanding that I was learning it and I knew from a young age that I wanted to be involved in health and wellness um, that's why I studied in Australia and then I studied at um, in New York at integrative nutrition and I'm also continuing this to do a study now um, through Stanford is doing this course through Coursera and it's fun just like to continually learn and I just feel like health is wealth and like continually educating myself I will be doing that till the day I die you know so so anyway back to modeling it it did teach me from the business side of things um how to run businesses I guess because I would talk to the CEOs I would talk to the you know the managers and the um the advertising you know gurus and be like so what are you thinking and how do you see this? And I, I was always very interested on the business side of things. And so when it came to launching my own company, it was like quite scary, but I also had saved all of my funds. Thank God my mom's an accountant and drilled into me that this is a short-lived career modeling. 
So you have to save your pennies and then one day you'll be able to, you know, invest it into something that you really want to do. And that's what I've done. Yep, that's amazing. And how, um, how has motherhood affected your life as a businesswoman as well? Oh my goodness. Motherhood is the best thing as you know, but it's like, it's something that really helps you be super organized. Like I literally have, <laughs> I have my breastfeeding like schedule in my calendar um, because my grandma taught me in my grandma is someone who influenced me a lot. She taught me from a young age that, you know, routine was very important. And so like keeping children in a routine, they feel safe. They know what's coming. They know what's expected. And so I have been working from home since um, I was pregnant with Hart and Hart is now two and Miles is 11 months and they're like back to back. So I was working from home before a lot of other people were working from home and I it, like finding that balancing act is, is hard and it's hard when you have your own company and you and you love being a mother so much like for me that's like something that brings me so much joy but I also have this company that's like my other baby and I do think it's important for my children and I have a nine-year-old as well who's amazing he's doing homeschooling and it's important for my children to see and understand that work is a part of life and it's important to have pride in what you do and it's an important thing to be able to earn your own living and do things for yourself and my parents um, taught me that as well because they were like my mom was 17 when she had me and she's still with my dad but she because they were so young she had to um, you know work very very hard and then she would study in the nighttime so I did spend a lot of time with my grandma but it's it's just one of those things that is a balancing act but you know uh, what? like I love what I do and I, I feel that um the most important thing is that my children feel loved and nurtured and that their needs are being met and they know that I'm always there for them. I feel lucky that I can work from home, but the mum guilt is like a real thing that is never going to go away. And even if I was a full-time mum, I would still have mum guilt. Like, it's like oh, I hear you. And I'm, I'm so glad that you said that too, because, you know, I, I have three kids. And so my oldest is 15. My youngest is seven months. And so when my 15 year old was younger, the mom guilt was crazy. Cause I used to work really long hours. And then I, like you also, I think over time, I started to really realize that by me working, I feel like I'm setting a good example and also like showing them what it's like to, to work really hard. And believe me, being a stay at home mom also is the hardest job in the entire world. I think doing any of it, like motherhood, parenthood is so hard and however you do it. Um, but it is like, I feel guilty all the time. My, before we started, my kids like busted in here. And it's like, I had this moment of being like, oh my God. But then, you know what? They're kids. <laughs> it's, yeah, I know. This is a thing. You have to let them be kids. And the thing is, it's like, they, as long as, as I said, if I really make it an effort to make sure like at the end of the day, I make sure that we do our wind down routine together. We have dinner together. We do our bath time. We read our books and like, they get to know and feel that time is like quality time. Like turn the phone off at that time. Don't be on the phone around them because I know from my nine-year-old that that's something that he's like, oh, mom, like, you know, because if sometimes you slip up and you think, oh, they're not really noticing, they're busy playing and you just kind of like try and do an email quickly. And then Flynn's like, mom, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, okay, sorry. Putting my phone away. This is like one-on-one -on -one time with you so you feel connected and um as I was saying when I was little and my mom was working a lot I knew that my parents and my mom loved me so much but she also taught me and I have this strong work ethic because of her because that's what I saw with her running her own business and all of that so you know I think there's positives and negatives to just like there is to everything yeah, definitely um so there's been a lot of talk about, I've been reading a lot of articles, especially recently, about how the wellness industry as it stands right now is very targeted towards one demographic. And it typically is people who have money. And it's kind of the same with food too. Like there's been a lot of talk in recent years about how buying organic, for example, is, is pretty expensive. 
So for poorer people, it's it's hard to cook healthy meals all the time. And unfortunately, we still sort of live in the society where it's kind of cheaper to go to McDonald's sometimes. How do you think um, how do you think the beauty industry can get behind making sure that clean products, both in food and also in in beauty, like how can we how can we help change the industry? I think it's such a good question and it's something I think about all the time. Like I wish there was a fast food, like healthy, like a fast food, healthy, like grab and go. I mean, there are like salad places and stuff like that, but I don't know. I just feel like, like I keep saying, I'm battering on here about health being wealth. And I think that like, for instance, I grew up, as I was saying, without much and my family, didn't have that much money, but we were lucky enough to live in the country and grow our own vegetables and just kind of enhance the simplicity of having fresh fruit and vegetables and like enjoy that. Um, I think that it's important to eat foods that aren't processed and packaged. And even if it's not organic, if it's just, you know, fresh fruit that you can get somewhere local, like wherever you're living, I think that, um, that's fresh as like best like whether it be so my little one he's like mom I want a snack and I'm just like it's so easy to kind of grab like something that might be like pre-packaged for them you know these all these little snacks for kids and even if it has organic written on it I'm like you know what the best thing for you little one have a banana and I pass him a banana and he's like hmm or you know like raisins like put a few raisins in a little thing for him so um trying to kind of I think we've been marketed a lot um with packaged foods and things like that and I feel that um when you like take like take care of yourself and you do eat more simply with the vegetables and fruits and whatnot I find myself I have a lot more energy um and I do think that nowadays more people are um like like target and cvs and whatnot are starting to carry more natural products for people more clean so it is a more accessible it's not such like a um high end uh, product but i do also know that um there's free things available like free meditations on youtube or free yoga sessions on youtube um, I also, because I'm so passionate about wellness for everyone and that being a really inclusive thing, I started Wellness Wednesdays, which is like um, just simple tools and practices that have helped me. So every Wednesday on Instagram Live, I do this session with someone that has helped me, whether it be like, if it, whether it be like a free yoga session or a free cooking lesson or whatever it is, meditation or talking about like how do you feel your cookie jar or thing you know what I mean like cookie jar meaning your soul um so I also have a blog on Quora called spread the light which is like health and wellness tips some other like things that I feel are attainable for a lot of people is like dry body brushing um using essential oils like there are some that you can get or removing your makeup with coconut oil um and it doesn't need to be organic. Like you can just get whatever coconut oil is like affordable. And I just feel like for me growing up without much, like with my family, like being in the lower income bracket, like as I was growing up, we were very conscious about what we ate and um, what we did spend our money on. And we saved up money for Noni Juice because we saw the benefits. And so you know, sometimes people don't understand if they actually add up, like, for instance, maybe they're having a coffee every day or a Coca-Cola every day. If they saved up that money, they could then invest in like something like something good for their health, whether that be a little water filter that they put on the tap or whether that be uh, noni juice or like something towards their health. But every little bit helps. And it's about, I guess, like keeping that in mind and also people continuing to, to make things like wellness related, accessible and attainable. And it's, it's, it's emerging of all of that. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, you were so nice because when I mentioned that I was having some postpartum hair loss, you sent me a recommendation for a supplement. How do you, you, you mentioned the book that you had read. Um, how do you keep up to date? Like there's so much misinformation online right now that I sometimes worry about people reading everything and it's like about ingredients and other things. Like what are some of the trusted sources that you go to or how do you distinguish what to believe and not to believe online? I mean, it's really tricky. There's a lot of information. And I think like for me, just being like an avid reader of nutrition and like the whole mind, body, spirit connection as well is something that just I'm so interested in. And so I have like three different doctors and one is like um, a doctor who integrates like natural medicine and he has a center um, in New York. It's like New York Center for Innovative Medicine. And then I have a homeopathic doctor who's Dr. Linda Lancaster. And then I also um, have really been enjoying, Anthony Williams has a lot of great books on like Cleanse to Heal. Uh, when I was actually, when I was pregnant with heart, I got quite sick and I considered myself a very healthy person, but I developed this autoimmune thing called proctitis. And the only thing that helped me was following Anthony's guidelines with, so it actually stopped my um, symptoms by eating super healthy. And so I was just really blown away and also by having the celery juice. So it just, for me, I guess eating, um, I guess he's all about just eating food that is pure, like fresh fruit, fresh vegetables and keeping it really simple it, it was so easy that it was kind of harder to implement because we're so used to things being a lot more fancy, but just having steamed potatoes, you know, is like super healing for your body. And I was like, oh, wow, really? Like, you know, and I just, I just knew, and I've, I've just known that that has really helped me so much and helped me get through that time where I was actually really sick. And I, I don't know. I mean, I just feel really lucky to have had that information. And he has a lot of information available on his website and things like that um, about different foods. And yeah. Yeah. You mentioned mind body connection. How much does um, or how does mental health play into your overall wellness? Like, do you do yoga regularly? Do you meditate? Like what types of things are in your practice? Meditation for me is super important and I've been meditating since I was about 18, now I'm 37. So it's, um, I've tried lots of different types of meditations. I um, tried TM, this other meditation called Kriya Yoga, both of those you have to kind of learn specifically. Um, and then sometimes I randomly just do YouTube, I will Google like 10 minute power nap on YouTube and like whatever comes up, I'm like, well, that's meant to be for me today. <laughs> or like, I don't know, I just, I mean, Insight Timer is also really good to have like great little quick meditations and they can show you like what you're looking for, stress release. And I just think we're living in such a busy time. I don't know, like, I feel like I'm like constantly running on a hamster wheel and like, I really am aware of creating that balance in my life, but it's not easy it's not easy to carve out that time. Um, do you have a time every day, like do you always do it in the morning, in the evening? Right Is now, whenever with, you can do that? With, that, with my kids, it's really important that I do it when they're asleep. So that gives me pretty much 5.30 in the morning till 6.30 in the morning. That's my time to like fit in what I wanna do. So whether that's meditation, some yoga, I have to like stop myself from checking my email because I do have an international company. It gets a little um, hard sometimes to switch off because there's always someone awake and always someone sending me an email for my company. And uh, I just have to really make sure that I, I give that time to myself because the rest of the day is like, I'm either breastfeeding or I'm on a conference call or I'm doing a live or I'm like running after my two-year-old or my and um, nine-year-old is like, mom, can you help me with my homework? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> so it's about. If, um, if you're like in the middle of the day and you, there's like a million things going on, you're super stressed. Do you have like a tip that you 
Like what, what tip would you give to people who are feeling really stressed about? Cause I do feel like us living on zoom right now, it's like a whole other different kind of stress. Like, do you, would you do breathing exercises? Like how do you de-stress like in, in the moment? I love to go outside. One of my favorite things to do is like walk outside, put, take my shoes off, put my feet in the grass and just like, and if I, if you can't put your feet in the grass for whatever reason, you literally put your hands out the window and get the sun going into your palms, like close your eyes and just feel the light filling your whole body, like every cell of your body with light. And so I do that. And then I'm just like, feel more recharged. So I'm totally into after this. <laughs> What's that? You'll be doing that yeah, after this. Yeah. Because the whole thing with like taking your socks and shoes off and putting your feet in the grass is it's very grounding. And a lot of us forget to do that these days. So that's why walking on the grass and walking on or walking on the sand, if you have the privilege to be able to go on the sand, it's such a, a wonderful feeling to have the sand between your toes. Um, but just taking that moment in nature. Like I'm also a little bit random because I'm someone that will be like, like literally go and hug a tree. Like I know it's a lot, but you know, I'm like, oh, and you feel the energy of this tree. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I remember years ago watching a video of you making your morning smoothie. And I remember thinking, my God, that is like the healthiest sounding smoothie I've ever seen. It looked amazing though. Um, but you, you are someone who truly walks the walk and talks the talk. What are, can you give our audience today, like what are two or three actionable steps that people can take to live cleaner? Well, um, two or three things. Definitely just be aware and like read all the labels as we were talking about before. Um, read whatever it is that you're putting on your skin, you know, in your house that you're using. So just be aware of that and then make an educated decision. Like maybe you want to continue to use that, but you know it's not good for you, but you're not ready yet. So for whatever reason. Um, another thing is just try to eat like fresh as best as much as possible. Like I said, the vegetables, the fruits, I know I'm like harping on about that, but I just saw it firsthand for myself. Um, if it can be organic, great, but if it's not organic, like that's okay too. It's better than something in a package. And thirdly, um, I think it's, I think investing in a little water filter is important, um, even if it's just, you know, in your sink. So then you can refill your own bottles um, that way. And it's something, there are some out there that like, you know, start at like hundred and something dollars, 120 or something dollars up. And then you can get more fancy ones, but just having a little water filter and your main tap so that you, because flushing your body out and drinking water is really important. And I know everyone says that, but it really is. And like, I like to, I've been drinking this tea, which has like fresh thyme, sea thyme and um, mint leaves in it. But this oh, is like a simple way. And mint in there. Thyme and mint. Oh. And just with hot water, you can add a little bit of honey, but then you don't even need to buy tea bags. Like you can grow your little like thyme or mint, even in New York, like you can just grow them as long as they have a little bit of sun. Oh, how long do you steep that for? Uh, I, I just keep it in there. Oh, that sounds delicious. Mm. Um, and all day around. I'm like just refilling with the hot water. Uh, um, what asks do you have of the Revolve audience today or how they can follow you or anything else? We obviously all follow you already on Instagram, but what, what asks do you have for the Revolve audience? Um, just to like take care of yourself, take charge of yourself and your health and be aware that our body really is our temple and we need to treat it that way. And we should be aware of what we're putting on our body, what we're eating and what we're thinking because every thought we think affects our body. And that's one thing as well, like all my products, I know it just adds to another whole dimension, but um, for a personal touch with core organic products, all of them are filtered through um, and touch upon rose quartz crystals in the manufacturing process. And that just brings the love to the product so that whoever is using those products, they feel a little bit of that, self-love that little bit of that magic in their day um and so yeah i just hope that people my hope with cora is that people start to really 
enjoy those little tedious kind of monotonous daily routines of like cleanse mist moisturize like they take that time for themselves to have a little bit of a magical experience and feel the love when they're using those products so they feel uplifted also on the back of the package there's a little um, positive word like joy or bliss or love those are high vibrational words that hopefully will uplift their experience as well so that's enough for me that's a just a whole to add the whole mind body skin connection that was a little added touch but first and foremost the products you know working is the most important thing all right well thank you so much and thank you to revolve for having us yes right, thank you, thanks Miranda. Thank you. thanks michelle i really appreciate it